station. Come on, David. formulas. I could give you a real one. Spring, sunshine, flowers, beer, and a couple of luscious barmaids. Stir that up and see what you get. Hmm, this looks terrific. What happens? Another explosion? from the deep sleep of winter. The flowers and trees open to the sun, seeking its life-giving warmth. It's spring. The earth teems with new life, and each plant stirs with the urge to reproduce its kind. Individuals die, whether they be human beings, animals, or plants. And yet life goes on. Nature has seen to that. For human beings, she's provided love, drawing them together with irresistible strength. And for plants, as we've seen today, nature has devised wonderfully clever tricks. But with all life, the process is fundamentally the same. With birds, butterflies, flowers. Sure, the bees carry on and the flowers carry on, but it's for us. First crew for the boathouse, quickly. The rest of you take a good workout and get some of the fat off your lazy bones. Penny, Penny, you take charge. Oh, thank you, Hannah. Well, when do you expect in the study? That's all I ask. You're their tutor, that's your lookout. I'm giving them something worthwhile. The supervisors will have another name for it when they all flunk their exams on Monday. those gifts until they put in cushions.
one pound under. <coughs> Watch those shoulders. Hereafter, I want you to stand against the wall night and morning for 15 minutes. And be sure that both shoulders touch. Next. Drop the towel. Look at those hips. Soft. Girls should be trim, hard. Get into the cabinet. You eat too much candy. I like candy. Here, I'll like it from a distance and stand up straight. I'm used to standing as a... That's better. Next. What is the matter with you, Krista? For the past few weeks, you've been acting stranger and stranger. A stroke is supposed to set a good example for the rest of the crew. I realize that you're hard pressed with your examinations. But is there anything else on your mind? No. Good. Two hundred and fifty. We're getting to it. Well. All right, one at a time. <laughs> Y times the cosine A plus B times the tangent A plus Y. What do you get? A headache. What do you get? Two weeks. I thought maybe you didn't want to. Don't say that, David. I wanted to, only I had such a lot of studying. But I haven't opened a book. And the exam's coming tomorrow. I should be back there now. Oh. But I'm here. Couldn't. Can't we go someplace? Would you? What? What is it, Krista? Oh, I'm so silly. Then what's upset you, Krista? Hmm? Is your examinations? <laughs> Are you afraid of tomorrow? Afraid of tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Terrified. 
another day is dawning, just another lonely morning, just another day of longing for you. How I pray that I'll awaken and discover I'm mistaken, and it all was but a nightmare untrue. If we could only sit like this forever, then tomorrow would never come. Say, it's ridiculous for a good student like you to be so afraid of examinations. Would you like me to quiz you a little and get it off your mind? Historical dates. If you want to. How'd the history quiz go? You know, I'd like you to get the help from up there. <laughs> ah, let's see. All right. The Treaty of Westphalia. 1648. Mm-hmm. Sodom War. Sodom War, Christo. Say, you ought to go there. David. I'm going to have a baby. You must do better, Miss Storm. When was the Republic proclaimed in Rome? Seven. Seventeen ninety-eight. And now, uh, the date of the Great Peasant Revolt. Don't you understand me, Miss Storm? This is European history. Where are your thoughts? I asked you about the Great Peasant Revolt. revolt. No, really, Miss Storm, the question I'm asking belongs in the fifth grade. The great peasant revolt, the great peasant revolt. A baby, 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 a baby. I'm very sorry, Miss Krista Storm, that among all the students you alone have failed. You are dismissed. Just keep on bothering me, darling. You studied so hard, Krista. I can't get it into my head. Leave me alone, won't you? I can't stand all this beauty. Well, you don't need to bite my head off. Then again, perspiration, hemorrhagic sclera, dry tongue, fever, and complete fatigue all go to show that someplace, somewhere, a morbid condition exists. That should require my giving you a complete once-over. How about it? There's nothing wrong. Quit bothering me. Let me take your pulse. Mm, It isn't my pulse. No, what then? Come on, 
Tell the old family doctor. It's a girl. Oh, in love. In trouble. And I thought it was something serious. Don't be a fool. Certainly you can't get married. Give up your career when you're only halfway through school. Struggle along digging ditches or something or feed her in a dump like this? Well, others have started with less. Oh, so love flowering in the slums. Why don't you give her a little thought? Do you think she's going to be happy if all her life she remembers under what conditions she became your wife? But what are we going to do? You've seen your father, hasn't it, Krista? Almost two years. But then father's also busy. He's a very important man. Well, he'll only be in the city for a few minutes this afternoon while I change his train. Please, may I go, Hannah? All right. Run along and have a nice visit. Oh, thank you, Hannah. Get the key from Kruger. I will. Why the head for accommodation? Yes, yes, of course. Is everything satisfactory, Mr. Storm? Quite. And I'll pick up your mail. Do it and don't talk so much about it. Didn't you send that wire to my daughter? Yes. Have I changed so much, Father? Why? Frankly, I hadn't anticipated meeting such a charming young lady. Then you're not disappointed? Of course not. Just a little shocked, that's all. You make me realize I'm getting old. I don't mean to, Father. How do you do, Miss Christa? How do you do, Mr. Smallman? How much time? About ten minutes, sir. Can't we go someplace where it's quiet and talk? Certainly, certainly. Be sure the luggage is put in the right compartment. Last time, some was misplaced. Pretty good, sir. Well, Christian, just time for a nice walk. Come. Father, there's something I ought to tell you. So? I was so happy when I got your telegram, and I knew I was going to see you. Now I'm afraid, because I don't know how to tell you. I know what's upset you. The school wired me all about it. It seems you failed your examinations. Now, don't be so worried about it. I wasn't even going to mention it. Oh, naturally, I was surprised when I first heard about it. I'd always been so proud of your school record. Now, let's not talk any more about it. But, Father... Not another word. <laughs> Come on, cheer up. I'll tell you what, I'll buy you a present. I hardly know whether to buy you a bottle of perfume or a doll. Doesn't matter. Anything. Surely there's something in particular you want? Yeah. Good. What is it? I want to go with you. I'm sorry, Krista, but that's impossible. No, it isn't. Lots of girls I know travel with their fathers. Yes, yes, but this is a business trip. I'll practically be living on trains the next two weeks. I wouldn't mind that. There would be days and days on the train. 
of just looking out the window, of talking, and really getting acquainted. Wouldn't that be rather nice? And funny, too. Father and his daughter getting acquainted. What about your school? I've had so much school. But not too much. Now, you're young, my dear. There's plenty of time for travel. See here, the time's almost gone and we haven't bought that present. I have it the very thing. <laughs> the last time I bought you these, they buttoned up the sides. Half dozen. Now you feel better, don't you? Yes, Father. I knew it would fix things. It's train time, sir. Yes, I'll be right there. Now, there's nothing more I can do for you. Nothing at all? No, Father. Well, I'll be back before you know it. Goodbye. Goodbye. But you forgot what you came for. I suppose he ought to know. Oh, I should have gone, not you. That was my place. Say, listen, how long will he be gone? Just a few days. I'll see him. It won't do any good. Nothing is any good. I wouldn't say that. He might help us. You mustn't worry so much about it, Krista. No, I won't. And you, poor darling, don't you worry either. No. No, of course not. Guess I'd better go in now. Yes, I've got to be getting back, my son. Good night. Good night. You're late, Krista. You missed the party. I was delayed. Krista, what is the matter with you? Nothing. Why do you keep asking me? I'm sorry. All right, girls, hurry up. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. How I recall my dear old mother putting me to bed. She taught me. Bye. 
dream. Isn't her father stopping at the Excelsior? Yes, that's what Krista said. Well, what are you getting off here for? I want to walk. I get it. A little exercise to warm up your cold feet, huh? No such thing. Well, I don't blame you. I'd stall for time, too. Early, that's all. He may not be finished with his breakfast. Oh, what's the difference? Breakfast time is good as any to be thrown out. You still think I oughtn't to see him? 
I think you ought to have your head examined. Well, I don't know. No. It's the only decent thing to do. Well, I've heard of Daniel in the lion's den, but at least he was thrown in. He didn't walk right in and say, lions, here I am, and, oh, here you are. Yeah. Well, all I can say is I admire your stupid courage. Good luck. Aren't you going to wait? Oh, no, not me. I, I got a 10 o'clock dissection. Besides, it always upsets me to see a friend of mine splattered all over the sidewalk. Five floors, didn't you say? My, my. Well, I'll see you at the rooms later, I hope. Yes? Who? Perrin? Who is it? Mr. David Perrin wants to see you, sir. A friend of Miss Kristen. All right. You may come up. Smallman, you never had any children, did you? No, sir. Then you can't imagine how I feel to suddenly discover that my little girl is a grown-up young lady. It was the greatest thrill of my life. Oh. Mr. Perrin? Yes. How do you do, Perrin? I'm glad to meet you. Krista has mentioned you now and then in her letters. Oh, I... Oh, come now. Not often enough for you to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Pull up a chair, please. You have some coffee? No, thank you. And you don't mind if I finish mine while you tell me what I can do for you? Of course not. Sit down. Please, may I see you alone? Well, now, this must be important. So, now. I... I hardly know how to begin. I hardly know you, Mr. Storm. Well, out with it. I... I want to marry Krista. Did you say you want to marry Krista? Yes. That's it. Oh, come now. <laughs> Why, well, you can't be serious. I am serious. Very well. If you insist on my taking you seriously, would you mind telling me just who you are? Oh, I'm David. Yes, yes, I know, but what do you do and all that? Well, I'm a student at the university. I'm studying to become a chemist. Chemist? One of those fellows with stains on his fingers and a squint? Yes, sir. Oh. Well, my father was a chemist. And his father before him. Parents? Chemists? I never heard of them. What did they do? Many things. Well, I mean... My father wrote a treatise that was read before the academy. But I mean real things. Was he a success? Did he make money? I'm talking of making a living for himself and his family. Scientists aren't overpaid, you know. You see, Mr. Storm, my father was content to spend his days in the laboratory. He was working some experiments to improve. I don't think you'd think they were very important. But my father did. He slaved for years. Then he died and left them for me to finish. And left you nothing else, I'll warrant. Oh, yes. His formulas. His work table. Notes. I only hope he left me his ability. All in all, a very substantial legacy, eh? He, he didn't mind being poor. He had other things to think about. And I suppose by the same reasoning, you won't mind being poor. And you will expect my daughter to share your hand-to-mouth existence. Somehow, I thought you might understand. Oh, 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 now we're coming to it, aren't we? Well, I do understand, fortunately. Why should you worry about being poor 
as long as her father's got a bank account. I didn't come here to ask for your money. I didn't come here to be insulted either. I only came to tell you that Crystal... You'll tell me! Now, just a minute, young man. You won't tell me anything about my daughter's future. There, I'll do the telling. And my plans do not happen to include marriage to anyone just at present. Least of all, an impoverished dreamer I'd have to support the rest of my life. You may find that there are some things even you can't control, Mr. Storm. My daughter's happiness does not happen to be one of them. I've always managed to take very good care of that. Are you finished, sir? Quite. Is that me? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Nice composition, don't you think? Yeah, but you got my head off. Telephone, Kruger. A nice composition, though. Kruger, the telephone! Kruger, telephone. Kruger, this. Kruger, that. Telephone, I heard this. Yeah, I heard this. I know. Hello? Who? Yeah, yeah. Miss Krista, a gentleman wants to talk to you on the telephone. Hello. Oh. You did, David? What did he say? Well, are you someplace where you can talk? Not very well. Girls. Well, then you better come in. We'll talk it all over. I don't know how I can. Hannah... Yes, I know. We can't just let things go on. All right. I'll think of something. All right. I'll wait at the station. Goodbye. Not. Hannah, I must go into the city this evening. But, Christy, you know that's against the rules. But it was my father. I must see him. There are visiting days for parents. Please, Hannah. It's very, very important. Can I visit my grandmother, too? All right. But please don't ask for any more special privileges. And be back at 10.30. Here after Penny, you will row at stroke. Oh, thank you, Hannah. If I don't tell somebody pretty soon, I'll... I wonder if he isn't half right, Crystal. It is a pretty dingy future when you look into it. Let's don't think of that. Oh, we've got to. I don't know why. Well, you see, I've always pictured love as something glamorous and beautiful. Something to remember. Not like this. You having to lie to get away from school, meeting on street corners, using a park bench as a home, eating in places like this. I like it. I don't think it would be half bad to eat here, even every day. Oh, it's a fine place. Yeah, if you enjoy indigestion. I'm an awfully good cook. You? Yes. I took a domestic science course and learned all about it. I even learned to make marvelous dishes out of leftovers. Oh. I can't even boil an egg. Oh, you should see the way I live. That's right, David, I should. Where do you live? Well... If you went right through that wall and followed your nose, you couldn't miss it on account of the smells. It's the street that doesn't have any lights. Go on. Well, 
you go on by turning into an alley. And when you stumble onto some stairs, you start climbing, and you keep climbing. And the more the steps creak, the nearer you are to home. Take me there. Where? Home. There's nothing to see. Please take me. All right. Best of all, I could spend my whole life in one. Can you hear it rain? Hear it? You feel it. It leaks like a sieve. Really? That's the worst corner over there. That's why I moved the bed here. It got to be more like swimming than sleeping. Wouldn't it be fun, David, if there were seven leaks and we only had six pans? Can't you see us running from one place to the other all night? <laughs> Here, too. Nights, mostly. Do you love it that much? No, it's just a job. David, you couldn't be happy without it, could you? Sure I could. Well, there were a few things I wanted to do, but someone else can do them just as well. David, tell me the truth. All this doesn't mean a thing. Across my heart, it doesn't, Crystal. Well, I'll forget it, just like that. Thanks for trying to lie, David. It was nice of you. I... Oh. It'll be all right, Krista. Maybe I can keep it as a kind of a hobby. A hobby? Yeah. No, David. That wouldn't be right. Hello. Oh, hello, Krista. Hello, Paul. Um, hey, Dave, can I borrow some of your bike chloride? You know, I've been working on some of those guinea pigs of mine. I got them all doped up with malaria <laughs> until they look silly. Yeah. Oh, thanks. That's yeah, great stuff, bike chloride. Yeah. One whiff of this and those little germs turn up their toes. <laughs> you know, Krista, I haven't seen you since the wine festival. Fine girl take to a place like that. Didn't she ever take a drink? You took enough for all of us. <laughs> there isn't that much. Well, what have you two decided to do, huh? There's one good this here window blow. There'll be one less chemist smelling up the world and one more good, honest workman wiping the sweat off his brow. Maybe not. Well, there may be lots of ways of supporting a family, but going to school isn't one of them. Now listen, why don't you two get some sense in your head? Get it over with. I'd rather die. subject. What are you going to do tonight? Nothing, I guess. 
I suppose I'll take Krista back. For the time of her life. Well. Oh. What's the sense of being gloomy all the time? Let's forget about it. Let's have some fun for a change. That's the spirit. But what if your school finds out? That will never matter. I'll put on my hat and be ready in a second. Where are you going? There's no telling. The lake resort? Probably. Mm -hmm, I'll meet you there. Oh, but I gotta stick with my guinea pigs for a while, though. Mm. Ready, David? You are in a rush. We mustn't waste a second tonight. You know, this sounds like fun. Uh, I'll see you later. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye, Eddie. The girl's gone crazy. How'd the moon be for a starter? Big enough. <laughs> 2017? Yes, sir. Good day. What's the moon made of? Oh, phosphorus, sulfur, 88 other elements, and green cheese. <laughs> well, what are all the wrinkles? Mountains? Just wrinkles. Oh, it's a very old moon. What's beyond the moon? I wouldn't know that. The heavens, mademoiselle. Show me more. Well, what is it you wanted me to see? Just a second. That's all. I like that. Crackers. When did Krista get in? A long time ago. She's asleep. <laughs> Funny, I didn't hear her. Like a night without stars, like a rose without you, is a gray day when you are so far away. What difference does good fortune make if when I wake, my heart must ache for a day? the day when the whole world is weeping. <laughs> um. <laughs> How much of this would I have to drink before it stops tickling? Shall we try and see? Why not? Why not? Biochemistry professor and some of the boys. I will bring them over. Good. Oh. <laughs> professor, it's good to see you. Krista, may I present Professor Straub, Miss Storm? May I, Miss Storm? Thank you. Beer and wine are excellent and plentiful, but what are they without a beautiful girl? <laughs> will you join us? Well, Professor. All right. Mr. some of the black sheep of all nations are in my fold. Here is Hans, here is Peter, here is Paul, and here, oh, the name makes me great. <laughs> <laughs> Will you sit here? May I have this dance, please? May I, please? 
badly at first, but you'd bury yourself in your work. It would probably make you a great man. Krista, don't talk nonsense. Oh, let's not talk at all. Let's just forget everything and imagine we'll be like this together always. Please. I wish I hadn't made you so unhappy. I'm not. Not now. I'm with you. I'm happy. Hold me tight. My dance. You mind, David? No. No, not at all. Goodbye. What? I'll be right over here. I think I'll risk this. What's the matter? <laughs> Where did Krista go? I don't know. She left before without saying a word. What's this all about? David. Did you take that bottle of bichlorid? You weren't crazy. Almost. I went back to turn out the lights and it was gone. Well, someone took it. You don't think. This is where we were sitting. The things are gone. A girl in that frame of mind might do anything. That's why she acted so strangely all evening. Come on, we've got to find her. Say, did you notice a girl come out here? Alone? No. No. You look along the shore. I'm going over to the school.
Is she all right? What is it? Krista's torn. Is she here? Why wouldn't she be? Well, I mean, is she all right? Krista is in bed and asleep. Oh. oh. What makes you think she isn't? Well, when she left, I was afraid. Afraid? Of what? Please, can't I see her? I want to talk to her myself. If you want to see her, you must call at the proper hour. And in the proper manner. I'm sorry. Well, Krista, what have you to say for yourself? Nothing. Only... Only that you lied to me? Yes, I did. But it was the first time. The first time? How am I to believe that? You must believe me. I had to go. But not to see your father. You went out with a young man. He was just here and I sent him away. David? He was here? Krista, I will not tolerate such conduct. You've been lying to me, sneaking out at night with young men, drinking and partying around, neglecting your studies. That's not true. Don't scream and let me finish. This school has no place for a girl who deliberately breaks every rule. You may resign or I shall see that you're expelled. Hannah, please, Hannah, don't be unfair. Don't put me out, Hannah, please. I'll do anything. I'll study. You've never seen anyone study the way I will. I'll row in the boat all day, if you want. I'll be good. I won't see anybody. I won't break a single rule. I'll do anything, anything. Only please let me stay. We shall see. Oh, Hannah. Hannah, you don't understand. Out of the 
nice warm bed in the cold water. And on an empty stomach, too. We'll probably have to cut holes in the ice like the Eskimos do when they fish. Or is it the Indians? My dears, haven't you heard? The lake's been piped for steam heat. Really? Honest? Uh-oh, better hurry up. Well, how's that little playgirl this morning? All right, thank you. Hannah's got a temper today. <laughs> Hello, duck. <laughs> Don't be afraid of a little cold water. It'll wake you up. Position. I said position. Eyes front. Ready. Set. Dive. No discipline at all. Maybe she didn't hear. Oh. Nonsense. What is the matter with Krista? I didn't hear. I'm going to teach you to hear. This isn't the first time you've disobeyed. Today you shall be taught discipline. Take your position. Dive. Now from the six footer. Again. she's going a bit too far. Never mind. Hannah knows what she's doing. Knows. Are you beginning to understand the meaning of obedience? Do you think you'll hear the whistle next time? After all, this isn't an army camp. Evidently, you haven't yet learned. Take your position from the 12-footer. That's not fair, Hannah. Stop it. You can't do this to her. You can't. I know what I'm doing. You don't. This is a private matter between Krista and myself. And I don't want any interference. Get back there. All of you.
Dive. Dive. Shamming. Any girl with backbone would relish this. Again, the high board. I want to talk to Krista, alone. I knew it all the time, but I didn't tell. Good girl. It's the longest I ever kept a secret. Sorry about the punishment, Krista. It's horribly cruel. You didn't know. Why didn't you tell me? No confidence at all in the captain. Not even a little. I couldn't. Darling. I think it best that you do tell me. Then we can decide just what must be done. I really didn't mean to be bad. It didn't occur to me one way or another. I guess everything just arranged itself. There was no planning. No. There was no planning. Such things just happen. In between dances, we sat in the garden. The flowers. The music. The night. It was all so very lovely. Can you imagine such a thing happening? It's happened before, you know. But right here in our school, my mother says the baby's one of God's blessings. It's just like a miracle, only different. Now, will somebody please say something about the honor of this school so I can punch her right on the nose? 
I see. Helen, what am I going to do? I don't know. Just yet. Whatever is right. Try not to worry. We'll manage somehow. Now, now let's get together and see what we can do to help her. Can we see Krista now? Certainly. Can we touch her? I don't think she'll mind. Poor little darling. I think it's perfectly thrilling. Here, cover up. You mustn't get cold. Why didn't you tell us, Krista? You tell us what you want to, Krista. Oh, I, I just heard the news, Miss Krista. At last, something worthwhile happens in this school. Go and drink it while it's good hot. You can't do that, Krista. Ah, you, you, you. A few minutes ago, you almost let her drown in the lake. And now you're all afraid that a flea might bite her. Go away, girl. You just leave everything to old Kruger, darling. She'll take care of you. Look at her, my grateful daughter. I've given her everything, everything. Ever since she was a baby, I've given her everything. And what has she given me in return? Disgrace. How can you talk this way about Krista? You scarcely know her. Know her? She's a girl, isn't she? The good or bad? It seems to be my misfortune to have gotten a bad one. A pretty mess she's put me into, don't you think? At the moment, I'm not thinking of you, but of Krista. You should have done that much sooner, my good woman. Much sooner. Well, that's beside the point. I hardly think so. I put her in your care. I paid you well for watching over her. True. Very true. And what care she has had, we have given her. With what splendid results. If a girl's own father neglects her, Mr. Storm, it's not unnatural for her to go somewhere else for affection. Do you mean to imply... I'm only reminding you that you are Krista's father. Judging from your actions, you seem to have forgotten that. Oh, so I am to blame. But it isn't a question of who is to blame. You, I, Krista, or the boy. There's probably enough for all of us. But what has happened has happened. And it seems to me that it's Krista's future happiness that is important. And I want to know what you intend to do about it. You were kind enough to remind me a few moments ago that I am her father. May I remind you that this, therefore, is my business? And I shall attend to it how I please, and when I please. Is that all you have to say? That's all. Except, good afternoon. You see, I'd almost forgotten what fathers were like. But I was reminded this afternoon. What happened, Hannah? Enough. Nothing. But didn't he say anything nice? Oh, what difference does it make what he said or didn't say? Well, they can't kick us about like a lot of footballs. Let one of them try it, just once. Wouldn't it be a joke if all us girls couldn't take care of Krista and one little baby? Yes, wouldn't it, though? And in the end, we're no longer a girls' school, but a nursery. Pickles, what are you going to do for Krista? Well, look here. I get a hundred francs a month allowance. I'll give Krista half of it. If you'd cut out the candy bars, you could give her all of it. All right, I will. Oh, but I've spent all of it for the next two months. Pickles, 50 francs, maybe. And you? Well, if I cut out San Maritz this winter, I can see that she gets a good doctor. Louise, a good doctor from San Moritz. What can you do? I can sew a little. A little what? Well, one time I made some pot holders, and Mother said they were very pretty. Violet makes pot holders very pretty. I know. We'll give her one of those castanets. Bassinet, darling, with the pink blankets. 
Oh, I like blue. And I can take the baby's picture every day to see how fast it's growing. And during classes, Kruger can take care of the baby. Of course. And I suppose I shall wash the diapers. Yeah. <laughs> Krista, we've arranged practically everything. Money, doctors, teeth and rings. Oh, here's a list. If there's anything we've forgotten, just let us know. Thank you. All right, that's enough of that. Let's think of something else for a change. Has anybody got any ideas? I have. Let's go dancing. We'll get Kruger to make a great big cake. Or let's have a banquet with champagne and speeches. Closer together. Get in closer. I can't get you all in. Move closer. Closer. Get in. Get, get in. <laughs> Man, you, you. This is the limit. Quiet. You, you blue beard. What are you doing here? I wish to speak to Krista. What do you want to say to her? I'd like to tell her that myself. You can talk to her in our presence. We know what it's about. You've caused her enough trouble. Why don't you leave her alone? Go fall in the lake. You don't have to defend Krista from me. Yes, we do. Against you and her father. Why don't you let Krista say something? If she wishes, Krista may tell you how she feels about it. I... So couldn't we go somewhere alone? These girls are my friends. My only friends. We can talk here. You make it very difficult for me. You think it's been easy for her? Well, if you want me to say it right out here... I've come to get you. To take you away. We're going to be married. You don't have to feel obligated. I'll be all right here. Well, who's doing anything because he has to? You don't understand. I... I love you. Did you talk to Father? No. Well, what business is it of his? Or anybody? You know, there's been too much public conversation about something that only concerns you and me. It, it's up to you. Krista. I'll get my things. I'm sure you've all been very nice to Krista. Never mind that. Being a man, you wouldn't understand anyway. Oh, they are all nice girls. Fine girls. But after all, a man is a man. And the father is a father.
Mariana. Goodbye, Krista. with things. How about that jazz? Or the cake? So you said. All right, off with the sweaters and slacks and on to the pier. 